Hello, I'm Lindsay Hookway. I'm a paediatric nurse, health visitor, international board certified lactation consultant and gentle sleep coach. And this presentation is for you if you're currently expecting a baby and want to know how to prepare for breastfeeding and parenthood. First of all, congratulations on your pregnancy and um, really just allow yourself a bit of time to process how you're feeling, how you're adjusting to being pregnant and all the changes going on with your relationships and your body. It's a really, really big adjustment um, expecting a baby and um, how we feel about pregnancy and our body and all of the changes that are happening really do have quite a big impact on your mental health and your mood and how you um, see your pregnancy. So for some people, um, pregnancy is quite a debilitating time. So François Morisot um, said that pregnancy is a nine months disease. Um, and for some women, um, they really don't feel very well during pregnancy. Um, so uh, they may be troubled by uh, morning sickness um, or all day sickness for some people. Um, they may be bothered by immobility. Um, personally, I suffered from severe pelvic girdle pain or um, SPD, as it's often known, and was on crutches for six months of both of my pregnancies. So I can kind of relate to that idea that pregnancy is quite a disabling time. Um, and yet for other women, it's a time where they feel quite free and they feel very feminine. Um, the female form is often celebrated in art form. Um, and so actually, depending on how you view your pregnancy, whether it's incapacity or beauty, um, actually does have a bearing on how you um, uh, see this time of nurturing your baby. So for some people, um, being pregnant is a time of sacrifice and um, uh, incapacity or disability. Um, uh, there may be some fairly negative um, connotations with pregnancy. So you may see yourself as huge um, or you may have some more positive um, associations. You may feel like you're blossoming. You may see yourself as the nurturer or feminine. You're sustaining life. Um, you may identify with being a mother even now. Um, and those are all really good things. And it's really, really important to hang on to the positives. Um, because actually, if you have too negative an association um, with being pregnant and your changing body, then actually that can have a bearing on how you begin to see um, this uh, season of pregnancy and potentially your unborn baby as well. But it is fair to say that expecting a baby does force some changes um, and for everybody whenever we gain something we also lose something um, and it is important to just acknowledge that actually you do lose some independence um, when you have a baby um, you do lose a bit of freedom um, for some women it can trigger some memories of our own childhood um, it may make you feel quite vulnerable because um, you may be dependent on a partner for your um, financial stability um, and those things can be really difficult um, and so it's important to just be patient with yourself and, uh, and give yourself time and space to process how you feel about all of this. Um, and certainly there are some really positive things about expecting a baby. Um, you know, never again will you be this loved and adored um, as you will be by your new baby. Um, you'll see your partner in a new way. Um, you may have a different or an improved relationship with your own mother. Um, and you are welcomed into a worldwide club of mothers, um, which is hard to beat. Um, so there are a huge number of positives, but you just need to give yourself time to process all of these complicated feelings. And how do you see your baby? So give yourself some time to imagine your baby. So when you view your unborn baby, what do you see? What sort of mother will you be to this baby? And how do you see your life changing? How do you think your partner is going to um, cope with your new baby? Um, so it's really important just to um, imagine your baby. And, and it's, it's clear from lots and lots of evidence that actually when we have a really positive 
um, association with how we see our unborn babies, that actually translates into how we um, parent our children when they are actually here, um, so when they're, they're actually born. Um, so give yourself a little bit of time for that as well. And also, how have you prepared for this baby? Have you been to some classes? Have you decorated a room for your baby? Have you been buying things? Have you been making decisions about how you're going to parent? Have you written a birth plan? Um, have you decided how you're going to feed your baby? Um, the truth is, there really is no manual about becoming a parent. Um, there is no single one right way of parenting and you are the best person to decide how to parent your baby. Uh, but uh, sometimes it can feel quite an abstract concept um, when you're expecting a baby. So occasionally it helps to have something concrete um, to uh, sort of hang your ideas on. So for some people it really helps to just buy one outfit um, or to um, uh, buy... I don't know, a pack of muslin, something fairly small, just to give yourself a concrete idea. Um, a lot of women are fearful about buying too many things, um, but actually it's really important to make the idea that this baby is coming a bit more concrete so that you can actually begin to see your unborn baby as a real person. And when you can begin to see your unborn baby as a real person, you can begin to get to know your baby. And this is really important for how you're going to parent once your baby is here. So have you given your baby a nickname? Um, I called my second baby Spider because she never, ever stopped moving, ever, not for a minute. Um, she was such a wriggle bum and it felt like she had numerous arms and legs. Um, and it really helps sometimes to give your baby a little pet name, even if you don't know the gender, um, because it just helps um, you see your baby as a real person and to begin to get to know that little person. So doing things like noticing when your baby moves, um, wondering what your baby can do at different stages of pregnancy, and certainly talking to your baby is really important. Um, and your baby will be able to recognise not only yours, but your partner's voice and any siblings' voices and important people. So it's really important to um, see this little person, not just as a photo on the ultrasound scan or a little bump um, or the reason you're in maternity clothes, but to actually see them as a real person and begin to get to know them. Because unborn babies are absolutely extraordinary. Um, did you know that your baby... Um, can recognise your voice from about 20 weeks. Um, their hearing is really quite well developed. Um, and in studies, um, when parents have read a familiar story to their baby every single day of pregnancy, once the baby was born, they um, actually recognised that story. Um, and not only that, but they preferred um, their mother reading them the familiar story as opposed to anybody else. So we know that babies not only prefer the sound of their um, parents' voices, but they also remember certain things. So it's really important to spend as much time as you can talking to your baby and connecting with your baby. Your baby actually knows how you're feeling because your placenta actually contains some neural tissue. Um, so the placenta actually acts a little bit like a brain and your baby understands how you're feeling um, which is really important because you need to make time to um, connect with your baby and um, pass on some positive thoughts to your baby because your baby will sense it. Your baby actually is going to share some of their own fetal stem cells with you which is absolutely incredible because stem cells um, have the ability to um, uh, repair organ damage later in life. Um, so they're incredibly important cells and your baby leaves some of them behind, um, which is almost like the baby's insurance policy, um, which will protect you later in life, which is absolutely incredible. And your baby, of course, shares nutrition and experiences and everything else that you experience is going to be shared by your baby. So, um, uh, when you are exposed to certain environmental toxins or um, stresses or 
um, positive things. Your baby shares all of that. So you really are not quite two people, but um, two people sharing one environment and one body for a short time. And it's really important to think about how you handle the stress in your life because it's probably unrealistic um, to avoid stresses. Um, life is sometimes stressful and we know that babies are affected by their mother's stress. Um, but rather than be worried about um, the stress in your life, it's probably more constructive to do something positive about it. Um, because actually it's not avoiding stress that's important for babies, but um, to have a resolution of stress. So if you do become stressed, it's really important to calm down again. Because when babies are exposed to stress in utero and then that stress is relieved, that's actually going to develop resilience in your baby. Um, so your baby will understand that stress is not permanent and um, that there are ways of calming down. And your baby also um, will be exposed to the sorts of things that stress you out once he or she is born anyway. So your baby needs to know how to handle stress. So it's really important to think of some good ways of managing your stress. So it might be just taking some time for yourself, having a bath. Um, some people find um, stroking pets really therapeutic. Um, some people choose exercise or just picking up the phone and talking to a really good friend or a family member. But however you do it, um, even if you've had a really stressful day, just take a few moments every day just to sit down, take some deep breaths, stroke your bump and just say, wow, baby, that was a really, really bad day, but it's OK. We're going to be fine. And mummy is here. Mummy's going to sort this out and we'll be OK, um, because actually your baby needs to know that um, you can calm him or her down. And it's really important, this bond that you develop with your baby before he or she is even born is incredibly important because actually you became a mother as soon as you knew you were expecting. Um, and bonding with your baby now helps you to be more in tune with your baby once they're here. Um, when you get to know your baby's character and movements, that helps you to be more responsive after the birth. And this is really, really easy to do because actually a lot of your baby's personality is um, congenital. So that means that um, there are certain personality traits that are actually present before your baby's even born. And they're things like how active your baby is, um, how regular their eating and sleeping habits are going to be, um, how distractible they are, how emotionally intense they are. These things are all actually set before they're born and you can get to know those parts of your baby's personality. So if your sense is that your baby is a bit of a, a kickboxer, a bit of a drama queen, um, then you're probably right. Um, and get to know those parts of your baby's personality now because it'll help you to understand and predict your baby's um, needs once they're here. And of course, thinking about feeding is a key part of preparing to be um, a parent. And so how do you feel about breastfeeding? Do you do you know much about it? Do you know um, if it's something that you're definitely going to do or have you contemplated it? Um, do you know if you were breastfed yourself? Um, do you know what excites you about breastfeeding and what makes you nervous? Why um, are you even going to try it? And I often ask parents how committed they feel to breastfeeding um, because that helps you think about the barriers um, that you might be experiencing and, and if you know what the barriers are you might be able to think of some ways of overcoming those barriers. So on a scale of 1 to 10 how motivated do you feel about breastfeeding? So just in your head think about the number that you feel like you could realistically give yourself. And the question I want to ask you is, what would it take to get that number up a little bit higher? So if you gave that number of six, for example, what would it take to make it a seven or an eight? Because the truth is, there are going to be some problems and challenges. Um, 
problems and challenges are just part of normal life and um, it's really, really important that we have a realistic expectation of how the breastfeeding journey is going to go. And if you're motivated and committed towards breastfeeding, um, then you will um, you'll be more likely to overcome those barriers. So if you think now about what is it that stops you giving a higher number? What particular challenge is it? So are you worried about um, sore nipples, for example? Have you heard from friends that they've struggled with their milk supply? Um, are you worrying about breastfeeding in public? Are you concerned about going back to work and how you're going to manage? Are you bothered about lack of sleep? So have a think, what is the barrier? Because if you can figure out your barrier, then you'll be able to um, get some more information about how to overcome that barrier. So for example, if you're worried about sleep, you'll probably be relieved to know that actually, statistically, there is not a lot of difference between the feeding interval between breastfed and formula fed babies, for example. And if you're concerned about feeding in public, um, you'll probably be relieved to know that there are lots and lots of um, tops and items of clothing that make for really discreet breastfeeding now um, and that you're protected to breastfeed in public. Um, if you want to, you can um, choose a nursing cover if that helps you. So there are all sorts of ways of overcoming um, the barriers, but everybody's barrier is different. Um, and if you know what it is, then you might be able to come up with a workaround. And you're going to need support, OK? So you are absolutely going to need um, a crew around you um, to give you help and practical help, um, uh, information and um, just a bit of emotional and psychological support as well. So at the very centre of this, it's going to be you, your baby and your partner. Um, and you're going to have to work out what parenting looks like for your family. And then there are going to be the immediate family members around you. And they have a lot of influence over um, how you feel and um, perhaps what sort of level of support you're going to be expecting. And then you've got your friends. So sometimes friends can be really, really positive. Other times they might have had quite negative experiences of breastfeeding. And so you might not find that um, they're the first people that you would need to go to if you ran into a, an obstacle with breastfeeding. Because if they've not managed to overcome their breastfeeding difficulty, then um, you may need to find somebody who can do that. And then, of course, there are loads of professionals. So you've got um, your midwife, your health visitor, um, you've got GPs, you've got um, the support groups around you. So breastfeeding counsellors, lactation consultants, um, uh, breastfeeding helplines, websites. There are so many sources of support. The trouble is, as a mum, you don't necessarily know what support is high quality and evidence based. So um, it's really, really important that the information that you access is of high quality. Um, and so I do um, tend to recommend certain websites um, such as kellymom.com, um, really, really good information um, that's evidence based. Um, if you uh, ask a breastfeeding counsellor, a, volunte a volunteer breastfeeding counsellor or an IBCLC lactation consultant, you're going to get good quality information. Um, but the first people that you're going to come into contact with, of course, are going to be the midwives and health visitors. Um, so do ask them. Um, and of course, that support is free as well. So it's really important to understand what things about breastfeeding sometimes do go wrong. And a lot of the time, this is to do with unrealistic expectations of infant behaviour or inaccurate information. Um, we do have very medicalised births. Um, and uh, as somebody who has had two very medicalised births, I really do understand how much of a barrier this can put up sometimes. And... Um, you know, having uh, obstetric or medical complications in pregnancy and birth do make things a little bit harder. 
IV fluids make things a little bit harder. So it is important that you have realistic expectations um, about uh, what breastfeeding is going to be like in the early days. So I suggest you um, watch some of the other videos that are available for free on YouTube. Um, if you search Lindsay Hookway, you'll find them all on YouTube. Um, so they are topics such as um, how to get your milk supply set up in the early days, why babies feed so frequently. And if you have as much information as you can possibly get, um, you'll be able to overcome um, the barriers that come your way because the truth is breastfeeding sometimes can be hard um, but it's important to get this in perspective because parenting is hard learning to drive a car is hard potty training is hard but actually all of these things have got solutions and the solution to breastfeeding problems are breastfeeding solutions so if you find them and get information about them, you'll be much more likely to succeed. And it's really important um, to know what things are myths and what things are true. So, for example, breastfeeding doesn't make your boobs saggy. Um, this is a lovely pair of butternut squashes um, that I found in the supermarket. And I think a lot of women do worry that if they breastfeed or if they breastfeed for a certain amount of time, their breasts are going to sag. It's really not true. Um, and being a mother is hard work regardless of how you feed your baby. Um, so there's no evidence that um, formula feeding or breastfeeding mothers um, have uh, any less experience of tiredness, especially in the early days. And breastfeeding is natural, but it's still a learnt skill. Um, there, there are lots and lots of women who really have to work at it. And the other myth that does abound is that um, you, 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 you need to eat certain foods. You really don't. You don't need to eat or drink anything in particular to make a really good quality milk supply for your baby. Having said that, it is a good idea to eat well, um, but that's only because it's a good idea to eat well because you're a human. Um, so like everybody else on the planet, you should aim for a healthy diet, a rainbow diet, um, with lots of water, but it really doesn't have an awful lot of, um, it doesn't have a lot to do with breastfeeding, it's more to do with just being healthy. And if you know as much as you can possibly know, you're going to be able to set yourself up for success. So um, be informed, um, understand where you're going to be able to get that support from early, and you need to prioritise feeding. So in the early days, the most important thing is to feed early, often and frequently and effectively. Um, and if something is not going well, then get help as soon as you possibly can. Spend as much time with um, your baby in skin to skin contact as you can and keep your baby really, really close, regardless of the type of delivery you had. Keep your baby as close to you as you can and just enjoy your baby. Enjoy those little milky sweet sl smiles and um, sleepy baby cuddles because your baby will never be this tiny and um, this soft ever again. Um, so just really invest in this time and prioritise the feeding. It can be hard. Um, it is exhausting, but you will be okay. So I wish you all the luck in the world and um, don't forget if you run into problems get help early um, from somebody who is skilled in supporting breastfeeding. Enjoy the rest of your pregnancy and good luck with your baby. Thanks for watching.